Johnny Rotten's going to take a bus trip through London for your dubious pleasure. London's changed, right? There's a movement here architecturally that's throwing out our history and not giving us any opportunity for a part in our future. There's enormous buildings with foreign interests going up left, right and centre that do not relate to us as human beings. Come to sunny London in November. It's fucking great. The only good thing about this town now are the drugs and there's none available. <laughs> oh, I'm doomed. As for drugs, just say no. That means more for me. That's Chelsea FC. It's nothing but apartments. It's a fucking shopping centre. <laughs> shopping scheme, that's what that come shop shed. <laughs> I mean, for a gig I wrote, Your Future Dream is a shopping scheme, I didn't really think it would turn out to be an actual reality. Maybe I was the catalyst that spurned this on, and it's all my fault after all. A couple of good things happened at the airport. The funniest thing was the, uh, the, uh, the passport control. The bloke was a Mohican. <laughs> this I find amusing. How, how things change. It, and now a mohawk is like an acceptable immigration officer. <laughs> Life's strange. And it all, it all comes down to it, by points out, it's just hairdos after all, you know. And that's why, like, there's an alleged punk or whatever, and we're supposed to wear an outfit or a kit that, you know, declared yourself as a punk. No, that's not what punk is at all. Right? No uniforms, or all uniforms, but no rules, except the whole world. I'm Johnny Rotman, I love the Bee Gees. Not much, though. This is King's Road, right? Northerners would come down to see Chelsea, and they'd, they'd come along the King's Road thinking, Corby, oh, so grand, oh, we'll see the swanky claw shops. And all it was was Malcolm and Vivian in their fishnet tights, selling bleeding rubber tea hoses. Coming up is the beautiful sex shop of Malcolm McLaren and Vivian Westwood. It is currently called The World's End. And believe me, that's where the world ends. Boo, you fucking bastard! I used to live in the road over Gunter Grove until they turned it into a lorry freeway. This was considered posh when I was young. This was like moving up from Finsbury Park to uh, this swanky end of King's Road. Yeah, that seriously was like me doing myself, you know, the social networking. That's like two rungs up the ladder, I thought. No, it wasn't at all. It just meant I had to spend more money for less. But all my friends like to visit. We're heading towards London. Fabulous River Thames. This is it, the River Thames. Look at that ugly, ugly fucking building. Look, it looks like two testicles without the willy, doesn't it? Great. The only good thing there is the barges on the mud bank. There used to be a hell of a load of drug dealers that lived on these barges here. You know, it's not for me to cast aspersions about that sort of thing, but... <laughs> there used to be some good wild parties there, but that was 30, 40 years ago. Hello, poor people! It was a, a kind of a turning point when I came up to this side of town, because the swinging 60s had, like, just about died a death, right? But everyone wouldn't give up their long hair and their Rod Stewart perms. And there I was at my bright green carrot top. And it was a clash of culture. And I was seen as an outsider from, you know, that filthy part of North London. What am I doing up here, you oik? It used to be a laugh hanging out with Sid and the debutantes at the same time. It was incongruous, but it worked. More coffee, Vicar. I'd like two lines of cocaine with that, please. <laughs> 
And uh, here on the left is uh, Battersea Park, just across the uh, River Thames. It's a wonderful scenic route. Battersea Power Station, beautiful building, made famous by Pink Floyd. <laughs> uh, I think I preferred it when the pig was flying over the top. The best thing about it, and my dad would say this, is the cranes outside. Because my dad's a crane driver. He would like that. Is that MI5? <laughs> Those boys know all about me. For years and years and years I couldn't get visas uh, to live anywhere else but England because uh, they, they wouldn't shut the file on me. And it, it, made, it made life very, very difficult. Uh, it's only last year I got a proper visa to stay in the US. And now that I've got that, I'm not sure I want to stay there. I, I think I liked the aggravation. Uh, but it's bizarre how a chap like me, I mean, I, I've done no wrong to anyone. I just spoke a few, like, home truths. And that kept an open file on me, like I'm some kind of terrorist suspect. It's really compromising for me to say I love London, because I'm looking around. I don't know what it is I love at all. I, I keep... It's, it must be just the people. I don't think I could have written the songs I wrote unless it was in direct relationship to human beings. You know, you can't just think up anarchy in the UK one morning over coffee. It's about struggling through the market at 6am, you know, for a bit of cack. Upper Street Market, lovely place. You could buy broken plates of china there for 20 quid, a whole set with a one-chip saucer, hence the discount. In fact, my whole early life, I don't think I ever knew anyone that didn't have chip teacups. You know, now that's considered, you know, ill health and disease spreading. <laughs> Architecture does matter. But architects, I think they might be the problem. They cause these dilemmas. Every, every so social unrest, really, is down to an architect. Every council flat badly designed. That's an architect that made that. And we have to then grow up and live in that environment and feel like rats in a cage. And our only chance of a, a, a night out is to come to areas like this, to go to the posh clubs, where of course they don't like us. Posh clubs owned by architects have built the council flats we come from. <laughs> They're murdering the place. Hello, poor people. Hello, poor people! I kind of agree with Prince Charles on this. <laughs> Hello! Hello! How are you doing? We're uh, fine, thank you. There's nothing wrong with Georgian terracing. It's very nice, it's part of our culture in a weird way. And I'm all for being a part of the modern world, but not when we're left out of it. That's Pimlico train station, right? A subway. But the building on top of it, I mean, that's a penitentiary, isn't it? It's a lock-up house for the loonies. Houses of Parliament? My God! Hello, poor people! Hello, poor people! Nothing but cunts in that house. The cunts are in the house. I used to think voting might change something. I learned it don't. They're all a loss. Labour, Conservative, Democrat, Republican. Got to get rid of the whole lot of them. They're all liars. They're dirty old men and they're usually what? There's at least two a year caught for some kind of child buggery. You know? They're worse than, they're worse than the church politicians. Probably the same people. They all end up wearing dresses. Where's all the police? Oh, they're all undercover, of course. They're dressed up as tourists to fight terrorism. <laughs> so daft, so British, so polite. Hello, poor people. I agree with you, mate. Yes, get them Arabs out of Iraq. Bloody hell, sort of place out. The home of democracy. And this lot caved in to George Bush and took us to Iraq. You know, no thank you. Guy Fawkes got it right. Poor old Guy Fawkes, a misunderstood comedian. <laughs> but at least he got an occasion out of it, you know. Guy Fawkes night. That's been like a celebrated, like, part of our culture for, for a couple of centuries at least. Uh, and it's an important part of our culture. We celebrate the fact that Guy Fawkes tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament. Uh, but champagne socialism. 
has now turned it into, oh no, you don't want to mention that anymore. Let's call it Halloween. What's Halloween to, to England? History's important, warts and all. It's funny, when I was in school when I was young, it was the one subject I loved most was history. And I used to row at the teacher a lot because I didn't believe what the books were saying and I was right. It'd be nice to stop off in the pub and have a pint, you know? But now take a look, right? After that lovely Houses of Parliament, you've got that opposite. Do not tell me that's a compliment. It's rubbish, it doesn't usually work. It's horrible when you go up there. There's nothing to look at, a load of office blocks. It's a bicycle wheel without the tire. Blow it up, blow it up, blow that up. I don't like anything so far. So it's urban chaos, it's just one huge traffic jam. You can't get anywhere, no one speaks English. It's a wonderful town. Blair's Britain. <laughs> when trumpets blare. When I was young, right, this is what we used to do with some saucy girls that used to work there, you know, servicing the uh, MPs. Used to get a pint of lager there for one penny, right? It was brilliant. It was the best place for drinking late at night. When the MPs really let their knickers down, oh, they're all wearing frilly ones. <laughs> this is um, when we did the famous uh, Sex Pistols on on the river in the, the Jubilee. This is where the police started pulling us up, right outside the Houses of Parliament. Um, it was supposed to be an amnesty of 36 hours, all pubs open, everything, everyone partying, unless of course you were someone like me. Uh, they, they chased us down the river, arrested everyone, but I managed to get off because some very nice policemen, they were looking for Johnny Rotten, asked me where he was. So I quite happily pointed out to Malcolm McLaren and Richard Branson. I was ever so pleased to see them carted off. <laughs> I'm no grasser, but when it comes to fucking up Malcolm, he's over there. <laughs> It's everywhere, right? and it's pervasive. I mean, that's a roundabout, right? And they plonk that in the middle so you can't see the other side. And surely that's like, you know, criminal. Blow it up. You don't have a view anymore in London. You're lucky if you can see 30 yards. Here's some lovely colours coming up on the left. Now, I'd like to say that's hideously ugly, but what I'm wearing is far worse. <laughs> I mean, my God, <laughs> what an atmosphere does that create? The best thing about around here is the hole in the ground. And watch out for police enforcement cameras. This building's pregnant. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Well, enough of my moaning. I think it's about time we found a building I like. Stop at a pub. Stop at a pub! God, I love English pubs. I'd like a quick Guinness, if you don't mind, Julian. And a definite <laughs> pebble dash in the toilet. Yeah, okay. I'm not joking. You can't smoke in a pub no more. Well, when they're going to ban the booze? Because that's the next step, isn't it? It really is prohibition. Rules, rules are for fools. But the good thing about rules is you need them first to know what they are, and then you avoid them. It doesn't work the other way around. Like anarchy, it's a mind game. I mean, Malcolm jumped on that. He thought, oh, oh, anarchy, oh yes, we can sell that. I think that idiot. <laughs> it's done as a laugh. It's knees up Mother Brown. Britain's a culture that's continuously changing. Immigration has gone on in this island since someone got on a boat and came to it. But there's a Britishness in it. Every race that comes here ends up being British. I know that, because I'm Irish. I mean, I grew up like, what, like, Irish immigrant parents, you know, in a heavy Jamaican, Irish, Greek, Turkish, multi-mixture race called Arsenal, Finsbury Park. We, the concept of racism was always in other areas. I mean, we had to grow up and muck it in together. It was a melting pot. And when, it was really hard to, to go outside of Finsbury Park and have to deal with the concept of, oh, you're one of them mixed lot. You know, like this was a bad thing. It was astounding to us. You've you seen, you seen my mates. It's all races catered for, all right? And we don't view each other as aliens. And you, you come up to swanky Chelsea and it's, you know, the separation techniques. Divided we fall. One world, one race. But can we all speak English? <laughs>
love me England, I love me Britain. Not too many folks here still do. Shame, innit? Expat, and I'm more loyal than anyone. This is the Queen, Mum. Loved her smelly knickers. Now you may add your insults. I ain't got them. That's what England's become, fags outside. Well, maybe that's the right choice. <laughs> this is what being an anarchist gets you. <laughs> Hello. All right. God bless. How's the cricket? Right. Good for a laugh. Any chance of England winning anything? That meant no. As you can see, I'm still as popular as ever. Everybody wants to sit next to me. 30 years of fame doesn't do you any good at all. It, it, it's, it's consistently trying to rob you of your real personality. This is like midday, and we're in a dodgy pub in a dodgy area, and I don't know anyone around, and they're all shy. It, it amazes me. I, I mean, I grew up as, well known as a shy bloke in London, and now I find I'm, I'm not shy at all. <laughs> They've all become what I thought I was. You know, anarchy in the UK was a desperate cry for attention. <laughs> Many called this London Bridge. Whatever the Yanks bought originally, uh, they, they moved to uh, Arizona, I do believe. What they thought they were buying was Tower Bridge. It's a glorious concept of architecture, this one. It really is. The way those like, you know, roads open up, novelty. It's really clumsy architecturally. It really is an ugly thing. But I love it because it's so British. Ugly. You see this glorious thing here, right? Lovely old Dutch stone. Now, what is that? What is that? What they've done to this town is kill the culture. We know that's an alien object, right? It doesn't belong. And, and you cannot see that lasting, say, what, another hundred years? There's no chance of it. None at all. And that, that, look at that. What's that? A lopsided fucking scooter helmet. It's ugh. It's wrong. Blow it up. I can't relate to this modern shit. I don't think anyone in the world can. It's corporations telling us that we don't count anymore. That they own our world and we merely exist at their pleasure. There'll always be an England. There will, you know, there will always be an England. Hello London, how the fuck are ya? Hello, Polish workers. Welcome to Blighty. The drinks are on me. Now, down there, right, Isle of Dogs that way, you know where the ships used to unload here, and, it, and they turned the Isle of Dogs, which was an incredibly hardcore working class area, into yuppie apartments. But you know what? You can't take the working class out of it. It doesn't matter what they turn it into. The Isle of Dogs will always be our kind of people. The Tower of London, a fantastic old structure, there but for the grace of God, I'm not locked up in tradition and history, as opposed to this glass thing opposite, right? And the excuse for this building is, oh, the glass work reflects the traditions and at the same time represents the modernity of the future. No, that's an ugly looking thing with a lot of pipe work. It doesn't reflect anything except it tells us whatever my culture suffered through the bastards that used to run the Tower of London has been reduced to a new load of bastards running London in glass fucking houses. You know? And these are the cunts throwing stones at me. Cheap. Oh, they're playing my music. It's my favourite rave tune. Oh, many a night I spent dancing to that tune. Look what a horse's ass London's become. Ha 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 ha.
Get off the road, you crazy fool! Officer, do you have a license for that horse? Ah, <laughs> see his muggy little face. You know, oh, those London bobbies, they're tough. <laughs> Fighting terrorism. All in the name of the Empire. Follow me. Yeah. Proper gooner then. Open to sedition and sex and all that. You're joking. And look where you end up. Fucking love you. Oh, then you're well into prostitutes and lesbians. Good on you. Yeah, good laugh them days. Still is. But yeah. London's become muggy. I don't know what's happened to it. Fucking champagne socialism, right? I see Melky bottled out of the jungle. Oh, of course he did. <laughs> When's that bloke ever committed to anything? Yeah. I remember him well. Yeah, fake. <laughs> See you later. Enough, sir. Cheers. See, regular people. This is. I like that about London. You you can just talk to blokes working on sites, and that's how it should be all over the place. You know, no class distinctions. Look at that. That is a coffee percolator. Uh, what is that building supposed to serve at? And look at the narrow road it's down. Like it's ugg, ugg, what? Look at Lloyd's. Lloyd! Bloody hell, all your piping's on the outside. That's awfully obese. I mean, that's unfinished, isn't it? It's like a gas works. That's another carbuncle on the horizon. Bloody hell! Have you ever taken an amplifier apart, you know, and you look at the inside? Well, there you go, there's a concept. I say, does anyone know who that gentleman is? Hello? Can you help me out? Who is that gentleman there? Does he represent anyone traditional? Oh, don't speak to me. Sorry. Officer. Even the police don't pay attention. <laughs> what a mellowed out town. <laughs> Fucking hell. He looks like George Bernard Shaw. And he was Irish. It's the Duke of Wellington! And he's not wearing a pair. Look, he's got no wellies on. See, there's British history. Lord Sandwich, he invented the sandwich. Wellington, the Wellington boot. I mean, we're a pretty industrious lot, aren't we? Rotten? What did I come up with? <coughs> that belongs in Japan, not here. It's in the wrong fucking place, you idiots. It looks like the side of one of them dreadful cruise liners that does them Caribbean specials. Blow it up. Blow it all up. Boom. It, it's so ugly. It's so antisocial that it just makes me really bloody angry. Guy Fawkes. Oh my God, we've learned from you. Oh mate, you are not missed. You are celebrated. I still want that idea of pizza coming into the flats. I've travelled the world so many times and I'm seeing all identity being crushed in every single country that it's like, name of what? Modern, cold, calculated commerce that just wants to sell us crap and wants us to take crap and shut up and enjoy it. There are so many cell phone company shops in London now. It's bizarre. Record stores are closing down to sell cell phones. For what? Who are you going to ring? There's nothing to say to anyone anyway, except, bloody hell, what are you doing tonight? Oh, nothing, you know, well, oh, of course. <laughs> London's full of people outside in the street smoking cigarettes, or, or on a cell phone, or both at the same time. It's not friendly anymore, at least in this part. But then again, I don't think it ever was round here. It's always been about commerce, but with no sense of values. Uh, welcome to beautiful London. We're in downtown, I think it's the bank. No, there's a bank somewhere nearby. Well, oh, you got better on that. But there's also this glorious avoidance of the wondrousness of the Bank of England and the beauty of a one pound note. This is St. Paul's, break your neck. See, they've cleaned this up too. But in a weird way, I liked the stone all, all dark. It meant something. It meant it was substantial and stood there for a long time. Polishing it up like this makes it look like Disney World. 
removes history. Leonardo da Vinci paintings in the Vatican, they want to clean them up and take the grime off. I mean, I'm sure the bloke when he painted them was well aware that they would deteriorate over time. Well, isn't that the point? Things are supposed to. Look at my face. In 30 years, it's most seriously deteriorated. Am I recommending a facelift? Certainly not. And I don't like to see it happening to old buildings. The point is that they're absorbing life. Things are supposed to shrivel and die eventually, but with grace and dignity. Look at the structures. Look back, please, right? It's a carbuncle of ideas, isn't it? You know, ode to a Grecian urn, really. Keats reference. God, I'm too good. <laughs> you got domes, spires, pillars, cornices, and none of it matches. What a shame that it doesn't have matching clocks. Now, if that was an American designer, there'd be a clock on each pillar. I like them old statues. Statues do mean something. They are focal points, and they do get you talking. It's always nice when there's a good statue at the end of the road. Fantastic that the Nazis never managed to blow this building up. My wife's German. I love her very much. If she doesn't want me to be German, I don't want her to be English. We're supposed to be different. It's what makes us count in the world, that we are different. Those differences matter. It makes life enjoyable when you travel the world to see different approaches to life, different structures, different meanings and attitudes. Do we want the whole universe to become one big shopping mall? You know? A Britney Spears universe. And we know how mediocre that is. If I was a true anarchist, I would recommend Britney Spears to everyone. But I'm not. So carry on buying your Clash albums. <laughs> Hello, poor people. Hello, poor people. Hello. Hello, poor people. That might sound arrogant on the camera, but the people I'm saying that to, they know what the, like, the, the gist in this is. Because I'm still poor people. <laughs> I mean, I, I did this bus ride today thinking like, oh, yes, great, they'll always be in England. And I'm ending up really depressed by what I'm seeing. It, it's, it's gone wrong. All right, we've got to take this back off these silly sods. It's the Americanization of the universe, isn't it? Sooner or later, Britain will become a shopping mall for American tourists. And look at this, look, more glass structures, bloody ugliness. How long's that thing gonna last before the rust sets in? These are saucy, like, corporations. They're building these things as, as a statement, almost like oppressive, domineeringly. It's like, bugger you, we don't give a fuck about you anymore. We'll do what we like. Hello, sir. Are you building something ugly? Yeah, destroy the city, yeah? Say your, say your Fucking joke, innit? There'll always be an England. <laughs> no! More poles on the outside. There's more poles in London than in Poland. And that's just on the buildings. Hello, disassociated peoples of the world. Isn't London a lovely town? Hello, indifferent yuppies. Everybody bored? Well, you made it this way, not me. I'm now a tourist. And I'm unamused. You fucking wankers. What have you done to London, cunts? Has anybody seen a cockney lately? Huh. I've heard they're an endangered species. They're going the way of the white baboon. Look at you, you cunts. You're all like clipped budgies, stuck in your fucking cages. What's happened to London? Hello, London. Do you still exist? Is there a London anymore? Is there a London anymore? It's bollocks, isn't it? Bollocks. Cunts. Where's my England? I want him fucking back! Cunts! 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 Yuppie bastards! Hello workers! Building a new car bunkle! Thank you for destroying my country! Blokes in suits! Anybody got a life in this town? Does anybody care anymore? Does anybody give a fuck? Is it worth it? 
Abi Oswald, you are my London. Get back to work. Come on, you got some more cell phones to flow. Spot a real estate? Got a yuppie apartment in Westminster for me? Super. Fuck off, everyone, for no reason at all. Fuck off. Fuck off, fuck off. He's swearing antisocial. <laughs> words like fuck, cunk and bollocks, right? These are regular words to us. We grew up with them. It's the way you use them. It's the way now modern yuppie sport fucking bastards come down and, and try to reuse them. It is offensive when I hear a middle class wanky go, oh, fuck off. Right? It's wrong. Got a life? Have you got a life? Have any of you got a life? Have you got a life, sir? Have you got a life? I bet you got a wife. That means you got no life. That look like a policeman. I, I should be careful. Who built that? Who built that? I want my money back. Who built that? Blow it up. You want a bus ride? Hello. Hello, poor people. Well, we're still following the police horse's ass. Right, that's how far we've gone. We've been beaten by a horse in traffic. <laughs> in the middle of London. <laughs> it's alright London though, really, isn't it? You know, where else can you moan like this? <laughs> I hate heights, I really do, but this is all right. I'm okay with this today, because I haven't seen London from this point of view except in an aeroplane. I can see trees and greenery way off in the background and the hills, so you still get a sense that this was once a country full of human beings. You know, a major city like London, full of history, and what does it really look like? Not a lot, mate. Not a lot. Mugged out of our own country. It's a shame, right? Centre of London and it's a bicycle wheel that stands out. All right? I don't know how many times I can moan about that ugliness, but I'm right. You know I'm right. Be nice to think I was an anachronism of the past. That we had a future here that was worthy of talking about, but my God, I got it right 30 years ago. I was bang on the money what they were going to do to this place, and they've done it, and no one stopped it. They've murdered the town. It's just hideous. God, I never thought when I was young I'd say Manchester was more pretty than London. <laughs> Even Scouse land. <laughs> Don't let the sun go down on me. It's nice, that, isn't it? It's nice. It's the only thing they can't take away from you, really, is the sun. But you have to be like 500 feet in the air to see it. Because London's now so overbuilt, we're really lucky that we can see a sunset. Because no one else in this town can. The sun is setting, and so am I. Peace. Off. Teetering on the edge. Well, fuck it. Thank you, there is no place like...